We've discussed the HPV vaccine many times here on Healthcare Triage. We're big fans, but new research makes for new episodes. This is Healthcare Triage News. We know that human papillomavirus causes genital warts and cancer. We know that the vaccine protects people against the seven high-risk variants of the virus, which are responsible for about 90% of cervical cancers. It also protects against two more variants, which cause like 90% of the warts. We used to recommend that adolescents get three doses of the vaccine, but maybe two would do? We have such a hard time getting all those shots to kids. A recent study in JAMA compared the HPV antibody-specific response to both boys and girls between the ages of nine and 14 years who had received two doses of the vaccine to girls and women aged 16 to 26 years old who'd received three doses of the vaccine. This study took place at 52 ambulatory care sites in 15 countries between 2013 and 2015. They established five cohorts. The first was girls aged 9 to 14 years who received two doses six months apart. The second was boys aged 9 to 14 years who received two doses six months apart. The third was boys and girls aged 9 to 14 years who received two doses 12 months apart. The fourth was girls aged 9 to 14 years who received three doses over six months. The fifth was a control and was women aged 16 to 26 years who received three doses over six months in the past. The main outcome of interest was the antibody response to each HPV type one month after the last dose as measured by immunoassay. This was a non-inferiority trial, meaning that they just wanted to see if any of the four cohorts was no worse than the control. They didn't need to be better. What did they find? The HPV antibody response in both boys and girls given two doses was non-inferior to those in girls and young women given three doses. There are lots of ratios in the paper, and I'm not going to list them here, but the take-home message is this. The immunogenicity achieved four weeks after a two-dose regimen was non-inferior to that achieved with a three-dose regimen. For this reason, in October of this year, the CDC recommended a two-dose schedule for adolescents who start the series before 15 years of age. And there's more. In a study this month in pediatrics, researchers reported on a study where they randomized 30 pediatric and family medicine clinics in North Carolina to different vaccination approach methods when talking to parents. One-third got conversation training. One third got announcement training. Announcements are brief statements that assume parents are ready to vaccinate, while conversations allow for more open-ended discussions about the timing, safety, and effectiveness of the vaccine. The third group got no training and served as the controls. More than 17,000 adolescents were seen in those clinics over the study period. Announcement training saw a greater absolute increase compared to the control group by more than 5%. Conversation training, on the other hand, didn't improve rates over control. The take-home message here, less is more. Don't go looking for long conversations about this vaccine in particular. That probably makes people think it's different somehow. Treat it like the others. Assume people are gonna get it. Use short, brief statements. They work better. And now it's time for lunch. What's that you say? A healthcare triage lunchbox? Yes, it is. You can go and get this right now, hctmerch.com. It'll make such a great holiday gift. I'm giving this to my daughter for Hanukkah. She doesn't even know. Healthcare triage is supported in part by viewers like you through patreon.com, a voluntary subscription service that allows you to support the show through your monthly donation. We'd like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Karen Green, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe and Karen. Thanks, Sam. More information can be found at patreon.com slash healthcare triage.